to land very soon. We are going to see the king. And heaven is my destination I'm riding with Jesus On the hallelujah train I'm riding with Jesus On the hallelujah train I'm singing, I'm shouting On the hallelujah train The train has left the station Heaven is my destination I'm riding with Jesus On the hallelujah train Like running, skipping, praise the Lord for what He has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like running, skipping, praise the Lord for what He has done for me. I feel like running, skipping, praise the Lord for what He has done for me. He has set my spirit free, I feel like running, skipping, praise the Lord for what He has done for me. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God, praise the Lord. Greetings my brothers, greetings my sisters. God bless every one of you for joining us for this teleconference. Hope you can hear me clearly. God bless you. Just want to start with a short prayer. There seems to be some feedback. I'm not sure where it comes from. Um, praise the Lord. 
I'm going to open with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we bless your holy name, we thank you for your love, we thank you for your mercy, we thank you for your goodness, we thank you that you afford us another time to come together to lift up your holy name, your name is above every name, hallelujah, angels, men bow down before your holy name, hallelujah. God, you have been given a name there, Lord Jesus, which is above every name, hallelujah. The Bible says that the name of Jesus, hallelujah, every knee shall bow of things in the heavens, of things on the earth, and things beneath the earth shall bow before your holy name. Oh Lord, we thank you that we are able to use your name and we have to access you, Lord, through your name. And we able can depend on you for every situation. And every time we find ourselves in any situation, we can call upon your name. Bless everyone, oh God. Bless the hearers and bless, oh God, this teleconference. I pray you will have your way, Lord, and lead us and direct us in the way that you want us to go. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Blessings, my brothers. Blessings, my sisters. God bless you for joining us today on this teleconference. And we are here to give glory to the Almighty God, the great God of heaven, the God who called Abraham out of his family home and said, Walk before me and be thou perfect. We are here to give glory to this God. Hallelujah. Who uh, who who actually divided the Red Sea and delivered children of Israel out of bondage? We are give, here to give glory to this God who turned water into wine. Hallelujah! The marriage of Canaan is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. Hallelujah! And we are so glad that we are able to hear to lift up His name. I love the Lord. David said, I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my supplication. Therefore, will I call up on him as long as I live. You know, it's, it's, it's a determination that no matter what happened, no matter what situation we find ourselves in, we can give glory to God. We can give thanks to God. We can lift up his name. And, you know, despite everything we know, we, be, we, we will be victorious in every way. Once we rely on this man, Jesus, because you know one thing he never do, he never fail. Jesus never fail. Jesus actually, um, uh, um, depend, things that is impossible, things that men think is impossible, is possible with God. And this is why we love him, because he's a God of impossibility. Praise the Lord. So we just want to thank God for this God that we serve. He is worthy of our praises. Today, um, uh, the Lord lead me to talk to us about the promises of God. And, you know, the, 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 the one songwriter says, they are sure if we only believe. All we need to do is just believe. You know, believe. And it is done. The promises are sure. His word cannot change his word it changes not he honors his word above all his name and you know i was just looking at how many names god has and i i i, I read something it says about 365 names god has got there's so many names Every time he did something for Abraham, Abraham gave him a name. Joseph gave him a name. And everyone gave him a name. But today we call his name Jesus. The same God. Same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a God who do never change. And it's good to know a God that, is, don't, that never change. And we know what type of God he is. He's a God of of God of love, God of peace, God of mercy, God of grace, and you know so many wonderful attributes we derive from our God. And when we know we're serving a good God, then you know something to be thankful for, something to be grateful for. Because can you imagine if it was a God who changes? Maybe today he would be happy, and tomorrow he'll be upset. 
and then you might be very nice today and you know like our, our nature as human we don't have time when we got upset and we have times when we are happy but our God is the same yesterday today and forever he says I, he says in his word in Malachi he says I am the Lord I change not therefore he sons of Jacob are not consumed even from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them so from ever since the children of Israel have been drifting away from God and every time they come back to God there's some king or some leader would take them back into idolatry into other gods and to serve other gods and to worship other gods but he remains the same I am God I am the Lord I change not and therefore because I change not mercy is extended unto whosoever will whosoever will whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved Whosoever humble himself and seek the Lord shall be saved. He said, I am the door. Any man coming unto me shall go in and out and find pasture. Oh, praise God. And I'm just, I'm just, just, I'm just happy to know a God who I can rely on. You know, I, I mean, where, amen, God bless you. Where he has taken me from, I can say, and God is good. And I think I think a lot of us would share that sentiment. I, I think maybe all of us, I think all of us would have a sentiment. And maybe if I ask everyone to give a testimony, we'd be surprised how many people could say, "My Lord, look what God delivered me from. Look how God brought me out. Look when I was in trouble, when I did not know what to do, when I was trapped, when I was when I was trapped, and there was no way out. And I call upon the name of my God, and He answered me in a miracle." miraculous way amen he never always answers us in the way we expect him to answer us but he will answer he's not a God that sleeps he doesn't sleep he's always there watching over us and that's why I love him I really love the Lord because you know I could give some testimony of where the Lord has brought me from but the, you know time would not be afforded me but I, I but so many things that I, I since I've been walking the Lord he has done for me and as I say, many of us have experienced the blessings of Lord. I know, um, I know a lot of you, you and my brethren, have experienced the power of God. And that's why we worship Him. That's why we take time out. That's why we make sacrifice to serve Him. He said in His word, Gather ye my saints unto me, who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You know, and when we do take time out to hear the word of God, to partake the word of God, you know, God take note. Every time we talk about the Lord, God take note. Every time we pray for someone, God take note. Every time we do a little deed, a good deed, a kind deed to someone, God take note. God take note of everything we do because He's a God of righteousness. You know, in the, in the normal world, you see people who keep in records and keep in books. They, 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 they sort of change things to fit to themselves, but God is not so. So we want to give glory and praise to God, God for who He is. Amen. Amen. And tonight, uh, um, bless you, my brethren. I, I would like to take a uh, look, look at the scripture um, from Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 9. Hebrews chapter 1, from verse 1 to verse 9. I don't know, Sister Clark, are you there? Okay, praise the Lord. God bless you. Hey, I'm going to read from Hebrews chapter 1. And I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 9. And let's hear the word of the Lord. And it says here, God, who in sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto our fathers the prophets, has, amen, God bless you, has in these days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed here of all things, by whom also he made the world's who being the brightness of his glory and the express image 
of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he hath when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance inheritance obtain a more excellent name than they. For I went on to say, verse 5, For unto which of the angels say he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, he bringeth in his firstborn into the world, he said, Let all the angels of God worship him. And, he, and to the angel he said, He maketh his angels spirit, and his ministers flames of fire. But unto God, he, unto his son he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Thou loved righteousness and hate iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, has anointed thee with oil gladness above thy fellows. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Um, God bless you, Sister um, sister um, Minister Avon. I'm going to go into the Word, but I'm going to ask you to just breathe a short prayer before I do. We don't have a lot of time. and But please, can you breathe us a short prayer, Sister Avon? You can pause yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, I think we have another problem there. God bless you. Anyway, let us go into the Word. I'm going to just ask God to touch and bless His words to our hearts. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are thanking you, we are praising you, we are blessing you, we are worshiping your holy name. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your blessing. Pray you will inspire our, word, our hearts to your word and pray you will direct our hearts, O oh God. Open our understanding, Lord, that we may understand you even more and that we may absorb your word into our spirit, Lord God. Hallelujah. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. Have your way as we pray and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory. Amen. God bless you. Um, now, we just want to look at the Word of God. Um, and we look at Hebrews chapter 1. And it's telling us that uh, God, God, in sundry times and in divers manner, spake in time past unto our Father by the prophets. So in the, in the, in the old days, God always communicate with his people. God always talked to his people and he used his prophets. Sometimes he sent an angel to communicate to his prophet. He commuted, communicate to them to tell us, to tell his people. It's because God is always mindful of his people. He's not a God who makes us and turns his back, but he's always mindful. He's a loving God. In time past, in sundry, in sundry times, times of old, diverse manner, He spake unto us. He spake unto us by our fathers. He spake unto us through His servant Abraham. Because we know how you know the story of Abraham started. And in, in Genesis chapter um, in Genesis chapter 22, when God said to Abraham, I think it's from verse 15, God said to Abraham, the, when, when Abraham made that sacrifice, when God told Abraham to take his one son upon the mountain and offer him 
as a sacrifice. And Abraham followed the word of God after the Lord placed a ram in the ticket so he didn't have to kill his son. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 5, the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself I have sworn. Now God is God. But when God swear, you know that that means that can, that's concrete. That's as concrete as you can get. He says, I swore uh, my, my, by myself, I, I have sworn, say the Lord, because as thou hast done this thing, because he was prepared to offer his son upon a sacrifice as God commanded, because you have done this thing, thou and thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. Listen to this now. In blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens. Amen. What a promise. Brethren, when we think about Abraham, he's the father of nations. But the same things, the same thing applied to us. The blessing that God gave to Abraham, which he said, by myself. He had to swear by himself. When we are swearing, we said, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, as, as cult culturally, we, we not to say, swear by my mother, swear by my father, swear by God in heaven. But God cannot swear by anyone else but himself. Because there's no higher. There's no greater. He said, by myself. Have I sworn, say the Lord, because thou hast done this thing and has not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. And you know, when, when, when God said, I will bless thee, we can rest assured that that blessings, no man can take that blessings from us. Not in the forces of hell. No power can take that blessings from us. He said, in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars in the heaven and as the sand upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of thine enemies. So God was speaking to us through Abraham, that he has made a promise, a promise for all generations. That in blessing, he will bless us. If we serve the Lord, if we obey the Lord, if we follow his ways, if we live by his word, if we, if we humble ourselves, the blessing that God promise Abraham will be the same blessing that we will inherit. We will inherit that blessing. He says, and thy seed shall be, and thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. So you see, my brethren, my brothers and sisters, when we serve God, when we obey God, when we walk in his statue, we are sure that we will be blessed. And not only that the blessing will be upon us, but they will be blessing upon others. Amen. The blessing will go on to others. Thy seed shall inherit the earth and be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Now all of this, all of this blessing that God gave to Abraham was only because Abraham obeyed the voice of of the Lord. You see there is a blessing in obedience and whatever we do from day to day from make sure that we are obeying the voice of the Lord. You know I think about how Saul the first king of Israel when uh, when Israel looked around and saw other nations had kings and this and you know, and they thought we want a king for ourselves. Well, Samuel was then the, 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 the prophet and he represented God. But the people of Israel wanted their own king and they cried out. 
And, and Samuel went to God and God said, they have not rejected you, they have rejected me. And God gave them a king, King Saul, as we know. And we see what happened to King Saul when God told Saul, God told Samuel to tell Saul, listen, you see those Amalekites? When they stand up against the children of Israel, when they come out of, when came out of Egypt, he said, go slew, slew, slay them, slay them. Slay every one of them. Man, woman, child. Slay everyone. Save the beast. Slay everything. Wipe them clean. What? Kill all of them. And Saul disobeyed God. That's a difficult, that's just a total difference from Abraham. Obeying and disobeying. It's a total difference. And he disobeyed God. He went down there and he saw the king and he said, though I can't kill the king and I can't kill all these fatty cows, we'll just give them a sacrifice, sacrifice them to God. Brethren, we have to walk in the way, we have to walk in the walk, we have to walk the walk, we have to, we, we don't need to just talk the talk, we need to walk the walk. Abraham walked the walk. He just talked, he don't talk the walk, he walked it. But Saul, no, he said, no, I, I can't do that. Whatever God said, we got to do. Whatever God said, we got to obey. And there's a blessing in obedience. And, you know, we think about it. There is a blessing in obedience. Because, he said, I bless you above your enemies. Thy seed shall get, thy seed, thy children, them that come after you shall possess the gates of your enemies. Thy seed, sh thy seed, shall all nation because you obey my voice and so there is quite the opposite thing with Saul Saul disobeyed the voice of God and we see what happened to him because because he rejected the word of God God also rejected him and he was no longer king he was no longer king because he disobeyed, he, obeyed, he, dis he rejected the voice of God. So we see that God speak to us and show us how he wants us to live and to serve him. And by serving him, there is a blessing. You know, if, if Abraham did not obey the word of God and obey, obey the voice of God, we would be talking about Abraham today. But because he obeyed, God has blessed him. That we can continually talk about this man Abraham. And we are called today after Abraham. The same way that God called Abraham is the same way God is talking to us. God called Abraham and God said, Walk before me and be thou perfect. God is saying to me and you and everyone child of God, Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, we may say, how can I be perfect? But you know something, there's a road. There's a road of perfection. You've got to be on the road of perfection. You may not, we may not be perfect. I'm not saying we are not spotless and perfect. But God said, be the perfect. Walk in the perfect way. Walk in the right way. Do what, follow, follow the word of God. Follow the precepts of God. Follow the commandments of God. Follow the will of God. Serve God. Walk in the spirit. And he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So Abraham obeyed God. And because of that, he received his blessing. And the blessing, now we can say we are children of Abraham. We are children of Abraham because the blessing that God promised Abraham has come down unto us now. So God, that's why the Bible says, my word is forever settled in heaven. His word is settled in heaven. The same blessing that God bestowed upon Abraham, he has bestowed upon us. Isn't that wonderful? That we are blessed. Now, um, in, Deuteronomy, in the Deuteronomy, God spoke to Moses and um, said unto him, to the children of Israel. And it shall come to pass. Deuteronomy 28. A very important scripture. Which tells us. What God expects of us. 
It shall come to pass, Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, that if ye shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord. Now look at those words. Hearken diligently. It shall come to pass if he shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all his commandments which I have commanded you this day that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations of the earth. Isn't that wonderful? How do we do, how do we derive our blessing? How do we do derive our blessing? Isn't that wonderful? If it shall come to pass, if you'll hearken, if you will hear diligently the voice of the Lord and observe and do all his commandments. That means uh, sometimes we hearken but not diligently. And sometimes we do not obey all his commandments. But it's, it's, it's stipulated quite clearly in the scripture that God expects us to hearken diligently and to the voice, to his voice, and to observe and to do all, not some, all of which I have commanded you to say that the Lord thy God will set thee high above the nations. Sometimes we are thinking about us as, you know, people of God, where we are coming from and what we have been through. And sometimes we think, oh, maybe because we strayed. Because in, in the days of Moses we, and the, in the patriotic days, we see that the children disobeyed the word of God and went on to um, idols and sacrifice unto idols and worship idols. And we see when that happened, God withdraw himself and when God withdraw himself from them they were beaten and they were chastened by other nations because they do, did not hearken to the voice of the Lord and if we read Deuteronomy 28 and go all the way down it also show you there's a blessing and a curse so God in sundry times spoke to us through his prophets in sundry times and in diverse manner, speak unto us, unto the fathers, by the four prophets. But now in the last days, he speak unto us through his son. So that was a blessing that God had promised the children of Israel. And all the blessings, he says in Deuteronomy 28, and all these blessings shall come unto thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord. Now hearken to the voice of the Lord. It says, Blessed shall thou be in the in the city, and blessed shall thou be in thy field, in the field. Blessed shall thou shall, blessed shall be the fruit of your body, and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flock of thy sheep. Bless shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall, be th shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou going out. Um, brethren, the, the word of God cannot be wrong. It cannot be wrong. We are to make sure when we serve God, we serve Him diligently and obey all His commandments. God said that to the children of Israel and he's saying that to us now. So in sundry times, in sundry times, in a diverse manner, God spake unto us, our fathers, by the prophet. He spake unto our prophet, unto the, our fathers by the prophets, the patriots and the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Now, what is God saying to us, brethren, by his son? What is God saying to us by his son? His son is Jesus. The son that he has blessed. The son that he has made a sacrifice 
for our sin. His son came from heaven. He was sinless. Jesus is the only man who ever walked the face of this earth without sin. He was sinless. And he had to be sinless because if he had sinned, he couldn't save us. His blood was, would, would not be would, would, would not worth nothing. If there was sin in the blood of Jesus, his blood would be worth nothing. We couldn't call upon, we couldn't say the blood of Jesus. We couldn't depend on the blood of Jesus. But he was a spotless, sinless lamb who God sent down to earth to sacrifice for us. And it tells us, as John saw, the blessing that we were, was bestowed upon us because it says that because of his obedience, we, we're talking about the obedience of, of Abraham, how he obeyed God. When God said, go offer your son upon Mount Moriah um, as, as a sacrifice unto me. And we talk about the obedience of Abraham, how Abraham obeyed and how God bestowed that blessing upon Abraham. Now we see that Jesus now obey God in that he came down as God ordained him, obeyed him, and bled and died. This is obedience. Even when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he, the Bible said when he, he, he prayed until his, his sweat become like drops of blood. Can you imagine the agony that he endured for us? He prayed and he prayed. He said to his disciples, wait here when I go to pray. And when he went and prayed, when he came back, his disciples were sleeping. They were worn out. They had no strength. And he went back and prayed. And he, I said, Lord, if you could only take this cup from me. But he said, nevertheless, nevertheless, according to your word, let it be. So we find that Jesus, he was God, he was God, but he was obedient. And we are talking about obedience now. He was obedient, the Bible says, he was obedient right unto death even to the death of the cross so so brethren god himself jesus himself was obedient abraham was obedient and god blessed him because of his obedience jesus was obedient that he wish that this cup that he didn't have to suffer ridicule he didn't have to be mocked he didn't have to be jeered he didn't have to be stripped naked can you imagine he was stripped and they put a crown of thorn upon his head what he did for us obedience and he went to the cross obedience and the bible says that because of this god has highly and I want to repeat that word. God has highly exalted him because of obedience. So brethren, what it tells us that obedience comes with a great reward. A great reward. Because he was obedient right unto the death of the cross. The Bible says because he was obedient, God has highly exalted him. And give him a name which is above every name. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. So it's going to tell us um, in um, Hebrews, it says that he was made. This is Jesus. He was made much better than the angels. He was made a little lower than the angels because man was created a little lower than the angels. We know that. But because of his obedience, God exalts him above the angels. He says, being made so much better because of his obedience than the angel. He was made better than the angels and has by inheritance, by inheritance, 
obtain a more excellent name than they. You think he's another day? You will sleep alone? For, he says, for unto which angels? Which angels did God say, Thou art my son? This day. Have I forgotten thee? This is Hebrews chapter 1, where we started. Which angels did God say, Thou art my son? Angels are ministers because God has exalted Jesus above the angels because of obedience. Obedience. He obeyed God. And again he said, I will be unto him a father, and he shall be unto me a son. And when we think about how oh, God is going to be a father to Jesus, and he will be a son, and then we ourselves are not engrafted in the sonship. Because you know that we are here and joined here with him. Bridget, this is awesome. We are partakers, because we are partakers of his suffering, in that we are tested and tried and beaten, and we are suffered because of righteousness sake, we are not joined here with Jesus. And that's why the Bible says, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Because we shall see him as he is. So we have a great reward. And this is why Paul was so, when Paul saw the Bible says, Paul had a vision, Paul said, I knew a man in Christ, whether in the flesh I know not, whether in the spirit he was taken up unto the third heaven and saw things that was unlawful, unlawful to utter. Can you imagine what Paul's, what, what that man saw when he was exalted in the heavens, into the third heavens. What glory! Can, can, we, can we imagine the glory of God? Hallelujah! Can we imagine the, 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 the grandeur? Can we imagine the Lord Jesus upon His throne, where He governs all nations of the earth, where He's become King of kings and Lord of lords? where he is the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star, and when he's all together lovely, and the angels shall worship him. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6 again, and again he bringeth the firstborn into the world, he said, and let the angels worship him. And the angels, he said, he maketh, him, the spirit, angel spirit and the minister of fire. Well, the, the, the thought, brethren, is through obedience. Through obedience, God is going to bless us exceedingly, abundantly, above even what we can imagine. All we need to do is obey the word of God diligently. As it says in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28. It shall come to pass if ye shall hearken and diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe all his commandments which I command you this day. This is what God is saying and is saying to us. And now I'd like to bring our attention to Solomon when Solomon built the temple of God. And you know, David wanted to build a temple. It was David's idea, but because David was a man of blood, he killed many, he had he was a man who fought many wars and spilled many bloods of many nations. Even though God was with him, but he spilled so much blood and he he sat in his house and said, "I dwell in I dwell in this in this palace and the tent, the the, 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 um, the tabernacle of the Lord dwell in tents. I will build a house for him, 
But God appeared to David and said, You will not be in my house because you're a man who spilled blood. Your son will build my house and I will give him peace in his time. So Solomon, so David provided woods and everything to build a house, to build, help to provide material, but he did not build it. Solomon built the temple and, the, and, and if we read how Solomon prayed to God, and we're talking about sometimes when we need God, we need to pray earnestly. And Solomon, why well, after he built the temple and at the dedication of the temple, Solomon prayed earnestly to God, earnestly. And you know something? Sometimes we we just we just pray, and God understands because sometimes we we haven't got the strength to pray. Sometimes we are so beaten and we are so we are so knocked aside and we are so battered and bruised and everything. And we 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 we, we haven't got the strength to pray. We can only murmur little words. Sometimes and God understands. God understands. But at the dedication of the temple, Solomon, the son of David, prayed a very earnest prayer to God. And it went on to say in Chronic, Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 1, um, I'm going to read on from verse 11, after Solomon prayed, Thus Solomon finished the house of God. And Second Chronicles 7 verse 11, Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house he prosperously affected and the Lord appeared so you know after his prayer the Bible said the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain or if I command the locusts to devour the land or if I send pestilence among thy people. Now, this is a covenant that God is making make with Solomon and I'm thinking it appears to us today that we will have the same covenant mm -hmm. so if I shut up heaven there will be no rain so God is ready God shut up heaven and you find there is drought and things and you find that sometimes God commanded locusts and they devoured the land and your our crops, our crops are consumed and sometimes he sent pestilence among his people. Nobody likes any of these. Nobody likes rain, no rain and locusts and pestilence. Nobody like that. But if he said, if I do that, he's making a way out. And he said, now, if I do that, if I shut, shut up heaven, no rain. If I send locusts, devour the land. If I send pestilence among thy people. If my people, which are called by my name. Now, he said my people. And we need to look at those words. My people. Because God has his people. God knows his people. He says, if my people which are called by my name, you know, when we um, say, when we, when we, and these days, when we want, when we, when we realize who we are and we want to come to Jesus, we have to baptize, baptism, put on the name of Jesus. So baptism is a way of putting on the name of Jesus. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. First thing, humble. Humility. God was humble. You know God was humble. Jesus is God, but he came and died in a lowly, he came and he was born in a lowly place. He's king of kings and lord of lords, but where was, where, did, where was he born? In a manger. In a stable. So God, 
show us humility. He showed us humility. So if my people who are called by name shall humble themselves and pray. Prayer. Pray. Pray is communicating with God. Pray is a contacting God. You know, pray is actually a communication, a link. It's like you have your uh, your appliance, and if you don't plug it into the electric, into the wall, uh, into the socket, you don't get any current. So your appliance cannot work. Prayer is actually a plug into righteousness, into God. It's connection. It's connection. Pray. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble themselves and pray. And seek my face. Seek my face. Seek the word of God. Seek the precepts of God. Seek the laws, the commandments, the statutes of God. Seek. And turn from their wicked ways. Sometimes we don't know, but we ask God to cleanse us. We ask God to purge us. We ask God to wash us and make us whole. We say, Lord, Thou art the potter and I'm the clay. Melt me, mold me, shape me. And He will. And if they hum and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Then I will hear from heaven. I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their lands. Oh, glory to God. How what a blessing. It's like we write, it's a contract. It's like an agreement. It's an agreement that God has set up now for us. So, so we don't have to. So when, 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 when the, the heavens shut up and there's no rain, and when the locusts come to devour the land, and when the pestilence, like we have pestilence now, when the pestilence come, when the pestilence come, if, if, that is a, that is a, that, if maybe a small word, but it have a big meaning. If. A condition. If it's a condition. If my people, which are called by my name, who profess me, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. That's it. So, when we fulfill our part, he said, yes, I will hear from heaven, and forgive their sin, and heal, heal. So, in a so, 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 so we, don't, we, we don't need to depend on, for instance, we don't really need to depend on any other method of healing. Shall I put it that way? We don't need to depend on any other method of healing. The method of healing is the healing that God promised us. That's the method of healing that we should depend on. With the method that he promised us. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. I will heal the pestilence. I will heal them of the locusts. I will heal them of the drought. Now, my eyes sh shall be open and my ears attend to the prayer that is made in this place. And now I have chosen and sacrificed, sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually, perpetually, continually, continually. And it says, reading on it says, and as for me, if thou walk before me as thy father David walked and do according to all that I have commanded thee and shall observe my statutes and my judgment 
Then will I establish thy throne and thy kingdom according to as I covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail a man to be ruler in Israel. Oh, praise God. This is all, brethren, because of obedient, obedience to the word of God. And many things that happened in our that uh, that happens in our life it's all because we do not take it to the lord in prayer it's just because sometimes we don't seek the lord and sometimes we are in a situation and we think oh i can manage i, I can get out of it myself I, I i can find a way out of it um but sometimes but the time is that if we depend on the lord no matter what the situation is that god is able to deliver us from any situation, and this is what, and this is what, that this is what God is saying. If we walk in His statutes, so now the Word of God, as revealed to us as in sundry times, and in diverse manner He spake unto, spake in time past unto our Father by the prophet. But now in these last days. And what is the son saying in these last days? The word of God is sure. The Bible is saying from beginning that seek ye the Lord while he is near. Call upon him while he may be found. Let the wicked forsake his ways. You know that's what the Bible says. That's what the word is saying. Jesus is saying I am the door. I am the way. I am the light. I am the water. I am the bread of life. Everything that we want is in Jesus. And when we start to realize and lift up the name of Jesus, that's when we get the blessing. He said, come unto me all ye that are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy, my burden light. That's where we get the blessing. So we... Our fathers in time past heard the words of the patri of the prophets in time divers ways in diver manner spake unto them in the past the prophets and the patriots but now Jesus is saying I am the way I am I am the light without me you dwell in darkness the world is dark without Jesus He's the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. He said the light has come into the world, but men prefer darkness. Can you imagine though? Light, I mean, everybody would like light because with light you can see. But people love darkness because their deeds are hidden. And that's why they can't come to God. And you wonder sometimes why people can't come to God. Because their deeds are not right. And so they do their deeds in darkness. Because they can't come to the light. Because if they come to the light, their deeds will be revealed. But he said, I'm the light of the world. He said, I'm the bread of life. He is everything. He's the water of life. When he saw the woman at the well of Samaria, the woman says, give me to drink. He says, give me to drink. The woman, the woman said unto him, how comes you being a Jew? Asking me for drink. Because the Jews had no dealing with Samaritans. He said, if you know who you're talking to, you'd ask him for drink. And he would give you water of life. And the woman was so excited. She said, he said, he said, give me. And then Jesus said, go bring your husband. And she said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, yes, truly you have none. Because you have three and whatever. And the one that you have is not yours. And she perceived that he was a prophet. Praise the Lord. And when God, you, God revealed himself, he said, I am, he said, we believe that the Messiah will come. The woman said, we believe the Messiah will come. Jesus says, 
He that speaketh to you is I am He. Hallelujah. And the word of God says she got so excited she left her water pot. She left her water pot. Can you imagine in those days that people have to go distance to get water? And they took the water pot. And it, because she realized who she has met, she left her water pot and she ran into the city. And she said, come see a man. Hallelujah. Come see a man. Oh, glory to God. Brethren, we who know God, we should be saying, come see a man. We who know Jesus, we should say, come see a man. Who told me all that I did? Isn't this the Christ? Because, you know, brethren, we have got here treasure in earth and vessel. We have treasure. And I, I want us to realize that what God has done for us, the Bible says what God has done for us, true obedience of repentance, which I know many of us has repented and accepted Jesus and have received the Spirit of God, what God has done for us. The Bible says even the angels decide to look into it. The angels in heaven want to look into what God did for us, what God has done for us, how God has blessed us with a tremendous blessing. We are more, the Bible says we are more than conquerors, not only conquerors, we are more than conquerors. Brethren, stand up for Jesus. Brethren, let us stand up for Jesus. Let us lift up his name. Whatever we find to do, let's do it for the Lord. Oh my God, this blessing. This, if, if you and I were millionaires, trillionaires, billionaires, we couldn't buy the blessing that God has given to us. And that's why sometimes I get so excited. I get so excited when I realize what God has done for me. And so we should all get so excited when we realize what God has done for us. So excited. We are sitting in with God in heavenly places among angels by faith and this promise we hold this promise we hold that is going to prepare a place for us one day he will come and receive us unto himself and the joy and the blessings and the glory of God oh my Lord Brethren, let us continue to worship this great God of heaven. And let us continue to be obedient because the whole idea is that God wants us. He was obedient. God was obedient. And we need to follow his footsteps in obedience to his word. To proclaim him for what he is. To acknowledge him for what he is. To glorify him as for what he is, as the angels glorify him. We are going to a place where we will worship God continually. We will be singing, a songwriter says, we will be shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills. And I love to shout. I love to shout. We had to make a shout for the walls of Jericho to come down. Sometimes we have walls of Jericho around us. Sometimes we need to shout. Shout unto the Lord. Lift up your voice and sing and glorify his name because he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. He has conquered death. He has conquered the grave. He has conquered hell. For us, for us, should we not glorify him? Amen. God bless you, my brethren.
let us continue on the road that we are on. There's only two roads in this world, believe it or not. There is just two roads in this world. Two roads. One of the roads is very broad. Broad. And one of them is very narrow. The Bible says, broad is a road that leads to destruction. And many. So if we're on a road, make sure, if, if, if there's too many people on the road, think again if you're on the same road if you're on a narrow road then you know you, you, you're on the narrow road and that is the road of the obedience and serving God worshipping God glorifying God and waiting for the promise which we have but in faith two roads a broad road and a narrow road the now road is a road of righteousness. It's a road that is taking us to perfection. The broad road is a road of the world. That we everybody's just happy, enjoying life, not even thinking about what happened after life, not even thinking about serving God. But let us stay on the straight and narrow. God bless you, my brethren. God bless you all. We come to the end of our teleconference and um, pray that God will continue to bless and keep every one of us and that we will grow in grace and draw nearer to God and whatever we find to do for the Lord, let us do it. Let us do it with joy. Let us do it. Hallelujah. Because nothing that we do for Jesus will be unaccounted for. Nothing that we do for Jesus will not be um, written and accounted for and will not be, you, we will receive a blessing for every deed that we have done. So let us get busy and start glorifying the Lord in whatever way we can. Amen and amen. The Lord, good Lord bless you, my brethren. We come to the end of our teleconference. Um, Brother Clinton, I hear you there. Brother Clinton? Yes, I'm here. Yes, God bless you, sir. How are you doing? God bless you. Can you close us out, in, sir? Can you close us out with a prayer, sir? Please. Okay, sir. God bless you. bless you my brethren god bless you all may god bless and keep us all and by his grace and by his mercy uh until jesus god bless you until it comes our call god bless god bless you brother david god bless you amen god be with you and your family so amen Walk each day, hand in hand we walk each day, hand in hand along the way. Walking thus I cannot stray, hand in hand with Jesus, hand in hand we walk.
hand in hand with Jesus. Hand in hand we walk each day. Hand in hand along the way. Walk in thus I cannot stray. Hand in hand with Jesus. I cannot stray hand in hand with Jesus hand in hand we walk each day hand in hand along the way walking thus I cannot stray hand in hand It'll soon be done The troubles and trials We're not get old We're on the other side I'm going to shake my hands with the elders I'm going to say, Lord, people, good morning I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus I'm going to sit down and let a little while It'll soon be done The troubles and trials when I get over on the other side I'm going to shake my hand with the elders I'm going to tell all the people good morning I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus I'm going to sit down and rest a little while It'll soon be done There's troubles and trials When I get over on the other side I'm going to shake my hand with the elders I'm going to tell all the people good morning I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus I'm going to sit down and rest a little while You'll soon be done There's troubles and trials When I get over on the other side I'm going to shake my hand with the elders I'm going to tell all the people good morning I'm going to sit down beside life I'm going to sit down and rest a little while It's coming down, down, down It's coming down And the glory of the Lord is coming down when the saints began to pray And the Lord shall have his way And the glory of the Lord is coming down It's coming down, down, down It's coming down And the glory of the Lord is coming down Hallelujah When the saints began to pray And the Lord shall have his way And the glory of the Lord is coming down it's coming down, 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 it's coming down And the glory of the Lord is coming down Hallelujah, when the saints began to pray And the Lord shall have his way And the glory of the Lord is coming down I feel like fire shut up in my bones I feel like fire shut up in my bones Glory, hallelujah, I feel like fire shut up in my bones, I feel like fire shut up in my bones, 
I feel like fire shut up in my bones Glory, hallelujah I feel like fire shut up in my bones I feel like fire shut up in my bones I feel like fire shut up in my bones Oh, hallelujah, I feel like fire shut up in my bones.